already. Again, for the actual assignment, we have our set of graphite pencils, okay? I do have some tape and we're gonna be talking about how we can use our blue painter's tape to sort of crop out our picture plane. I have my uh, sharpener, my silver sharpener that was also available on the supply kit, okay? And I have my white eraser, okay? Which I'm gonna be utilizing for the process. And then I have my 24 inch ruler. What's really useful about the 24, 24 inch ruler uh, is that it has sort of a matte sort of uh, base on the back where you where you can use. So when you move your ruler, if you apply a little bit of pressure, a little bit of gravity on one side, it doesn't move as much, which is really helpful. We will also be using, which I didn't bring out, which I'm going to bring out now, our kneaded eraser. And I think I've used um, parts of the kneaded eraser enough so we can, again, just mold it so we can clean up some of the darker areas because some of the charcoal is still on there so I have a nice clean surface to work with, okay. Questions about materials? I'm just gonna move this. I did have a lot of extra graphite pencils left. So those of you, again, sort of uh, missing or still need those materials, just let me know. I'll try to provide as much as I can for you guys. Okay. All righty, so before we start our actual drawing itself, let's get into the material. Again, I like to keep some paper towels next to me. So just in case if I make a mess, I can be able to sort of uh, sharpen my excess uh, graphites onto my paper towel so I can just throw that away once I'm done. But again, mind you, if you want to follow along in this process, which I highly recommend, uh, you can sort of encounter the problems we're going to be facing and talking about now, uh, so it doesn't become a surprise later on in this process, okay? Uh, I'm going to zoom in slightly, okay? And a part of this process, again, in the same way when we worked on, again, I do apologize for the shadow of the camera. Um, part of this process, we're going to be discussing how we can create the value with the variations of the graphites. So if you notice, I'm gonna flip this on the side. I have a sort of variation between the graphites, okay? What we do have is, they're actually slightly off order. We have a 6H, which should be on the bottom, a 4H, a 2H, an HB, and some of you may have this, may not, an F, a B, a 2B, again, 3B, 4B, 5B, and then 6B. I'll line that up so you guys can see that, okay? Now, what's really interesting and something to consider in this process is the, the higher the number of the H, okay? Let me move the camera slightly downward, sorry. The higher the number of the H, the lighter meaning a 6H will be lighter than a 4H and then a 2H, okay? We're gonna take the F out because I think that might not be in the process, uh, might not be uh, in your guys' kits, uh, but a sort of middle between the H and the B would be the HB. Uh, and then it goes to a, just a standard B, a standard 2B, which is a normal pencil. And then now we get a little bit darker to a 3B and then more darker to a 4B, and then 5B, and then uh, 6B. 6B would be the darkest. Now let's put this into practice, okay? Let's start off actually with the dark first. I'm gonna zoom out slightly, okay? I'm gonna move this on the side. I'm gonna take my sharpener. Notice, again, I've been using this pencil for quite some time, so I'm just gonna sharpen it. And we're gonna make a swatch, okay? Again, similarly from the other assignment that we did for the still life with the charcoal. Think about this as the compressed, if that helps. I'm gonna just make a swatch right over here. I'm, again, I'm using my pencil as almost uh, on an angle of 20 degrees. You don't wanna hold it as a 90 degree angle like that, straightforward. What you wanna do is sort of hold it on its side and just gradually make a square. Doesn't have to be perfect. And you can see it's really soft to use. 
And the B is for the boldness or the blackness of how dark it is, okay? Now, if I apply a little bit more pressure, holding my index, my middle and my thumb towards the middle half of my pencil, applying a little bit more pressure, you can see how dark that amount of graphite is. And I'm gonna label this 6B. I'm now gonna to move to my 5B. Do the same thing. And you can start to see some of the marks here are much more separated and you can kind of see those separations between the holes of white underneath the surface of the paper. The more I'm actually applying the same amount of pressure here for with my 5B, they're much more sharper. You don't see that much of a gap, which is interesting, right? I'm gonna do the same thing, add a little bit more pressure. And that's slightly lighter than my 6B, okay? Let's do the same thing for the 4B. And again, those of you who are following along, you can see those differences. Do the same thing, add a little bit more pressure. That's slightly lighter than the 5B. Label that. So far, we have those three. Okay, do the same thing with 3B. Now it's getting almost slightly difficult to use. Not difficult, but much more handling, I would say. Okay. Actually applying a little bit more pressure because I'm, no, I'm noticing there's much more force of gravity. Okay. And a 2B is the standard sort of format of everyday pencils that we use throughout our lives. So this should feel very familiar. Okay, same amount of pressure. And I can almost feel the difference between the 6B and the 2B. The 6B, which, which um, we have here on the left, was much more easier to use, much more fluid. It was much more uh, sort of uh, natural to kind of, kind of fill in that darkness in relationship to my 2B. And again, this is getting just familiar with the material. Now let's try a B also known as like a 1B. Huge difference from this job, right? Let's darken some of that. Now I'm noticing again, it's almost feels a little bit sharper, a little bit harder, same amount of pressure. It almost becomes more shinier in a way, which is interesting. And I think a part of that process is fascinating because the graphite is extremely shiny in relationship to the uh, charcoal. Let's move to the HB. Now I already can feel that tension because it almost feels like it's sharper and it's a lot lighter. And then based on the amount of pressure I'm applying to the surface of the paper, it almost feels like it's gonna crack it's louder too. Okay. Do the same amount with the dark. I'm actually applying a lot of force. You can see some of it, it's almost too close to the light, lighter areas that, I, that we made with the value, which is interesting, right? Let's move that on the side. Let's go to the 2H and you'll start to see a gradual jump between, now this is even actually more difficult, which is interesting. And I like that sort of tension between those surfaces. It almost resists the paper, which is fantastic. Because I may have lighter areas in my drawing that I want to add or refine with some of the darks and some of the lights. Okay. 2H. Let's 
let's go to the 4-H. And this is extremely light. And th this is actually great to use for lighter highlights. If you wanna add some figurations, if you wanna add some figures or some uh, bodies or even animals in your uh, perspective drawings, you can use some of the higher H's for those lights, highlights. And that is interesting to see those reactions of how the same amount of pressure I'm applying to. You can start to see they're almost unrecognizable. They're very close in terms of their values. This is for H. Even writing the 4H directly on there was uh, sharper. And this is the highest, which is the 6H. Same amount of pressure. You can see it's really loud too in that process. It makes a lot of noise. And then we go over it with the same amount of pressure. And that's interesting right there. Right, and that's 6H. What questions do we have about that? You can see this gradual jump between 6B to 6H, right? Now, I'm gonna move the graph lights on the side for a second. You could also erase with your white uh, eraser, and you can see, what do you notice? It's a lot easier to erase your high H to your B with your white eraser. Now let's try to erase the, uh, the high Bs. And similarly, again, with the charcoal, the compressed charcoal, it gets slightly much more difficult to erase, but it still takes it off. If you want to sort of smear some of those areas or sort of kind of make some sort of texture, you could do the same thing with your kneaded eraser, right? What do you do? Take your kneaded eraser, kind of remove some of those areas there. And you can see some of it comes off. Do the same thing here. Do the same thing here. And you can kind of get an interesting reaction to each individual one, right? Some of it took it off, some of it's still on, still on, and then you can see gradually it kind of gets much more easier to kind of erase, okay? Did that make sense? Yep. Perfect. All right, now let's get into the reference. Just move this. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Move my paper towel. Move the camera. It's right about, let's see. Right about there. Okay. Now, what I did is I took my sheet of paper and I created a picture plane, okay? And why did I do this, right? It sort of makes, again, sort of a framework on my edge of my paper to not only have a border so I can remove my tape and I can kind of have a sort of cleaner edge drawing, but also for the sake of the demo, I can use a second vanishing point to create a sort of floorboard or sort of perspective on the ground, okay? I'm actually gonna move the sheet of paper, or actually I should move the, um, what is it called? The, uh, the camera, because I'm actually gonna change my orientation. Slightly different to my image. So what I'm gonna do is change it to a landscape orientation, okay? And now I'm gonna use this as my picture plan. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see that. We can see this correctly, correct? Yes. Perfect. Now this is where it's crucial. 
I'm actually going to work from memory. Okay. And I think this part of this process is going to be fun to use because I want you guys to think about this as an exercise. Remember, this is just a basic demo. Okay. I'm going to make uh, a drawing based on the hallways of the studios on campus. And those of you who've been on campus, you know what I mean in this process. And those of you who don't, this will be an interesting sort of introduction to uh, the campus's hallway on the Fine Arts Building. I'm gonna use, for the sake of the demo, because you guys can see it much more clearly, a 6B, okay? And the reason why I'm using this, because it's extremely dark, right? If I used a 6H, same amount of pressure. That's extremely difficult to see on your point of view, okay? Uh, questions about that? Okay. And those of you who want to follow along in this process, you're more than happy to, okay? So what I did is just, I sort of left a one and a half inch gap from the borders of my sheet of paper. This is my picture plane, okay? Similarly, when we talked about the lecture uh, earlier in the lecture, when we discussed Alberti's book titled On Painting, he talked about, and he discussed in, uh, in his book, is looking through a window or looking through a picture plane, which he interprets as a window, okay? So this is my picture plane, okay? I'm gonna take my ruler. And again, this is where I find a lot of students have a lot of problem in this process, is your ruler is your guide. This is a tool. Same way, similarly as your pencil. This is a tool. This is not a crutch. I see a lot of students measuring inch by inch, centimeter by centimeter, the width of a door, the width of a tile, or the kind of how uh, wide or how tall certain um, parts of their architecture is. I want you to try to do this freehand without measuring verbatim of what you see, okay? I want you to have fun with this. But if you wanna be very specific, that's what you have towards your advantage is the ruler's uh, numbers. So you can calculate how far and how wide it is. We're actually gonna make one demo for this drawing and then another one for the reference that we have available on Canvas. Uh, so you can follow along in that, in that process as well. So I'm gonna use middle as my horizon, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna make my ruler straight. And I'm gonna make it a, a direct kind of separation between that drawing, okay? So we have one plane and we have another, okay? Now, I'm gonna, instead of putting my vanishing point in the center, which typically is done throughout the, the process of the demo, I'm actually gonna move it here, right about here. And I'm just gonna mark that VP, okay? And I can mark it on my side right here, H for horizon. You don't have to if you don't want to, but let's see what happens, right? I'm gonna take my ruler, move it on my vanishing point right about there, and I'm gonna mark it to the corner of my picture plane, which is here, okay? So I'm gonna take my ruler, and I'm gonna make a line. This is my first set of orthogonals, right? Okay, does that make sense? Now, I'm gonna do the same thing on my right-hand side. Take my ruler, line it up to my vanishing point, always remembering that all of my converging lines, my orthogonals from the bottom to the top will meet uh, where? On my vanishing point, okay? And I'm gonna make a line that converges right about there. Okay. Was that difficult? Was that confusing to anyone so far? Yes, no, maybe so? Nope. Perfect. I'm gonna do the same thing for the top. Go to my corner here on my top left, take my ruler, make sure it's straight. And again, we're gonna make a multiple errors, so keep this in mind, okay? Draw it to my vanishing point, we have it right over there. I'm gonna do the same thing here, to my left, or to my right, excuse me. And I'm gonna make a line that converges there. Now I have a few things. I have a horizon line, I have my vanishing point, and I have two orthogonal lines so far on my floor, and then two on the top. 
where I'm going to draw my ceiling. Okay. Now I'm going to make a vertical line. And this is just for the sake of me in terms of my uh, point of view. Uh, and a part of this pro process is that if I make a vertical line on my vanishing point, straight, right, right about there, actually slightly off, I sort of missed my vanishing point, excuse me. This, were, uh, this will actually be a guide uh, for me as the artist so I can be aware of identifying where I am at, uh, in terms of the picture plane, right? Where am I standing? If I were to stand in front of something, right? If I was looking through a hallway, I would be standing here, which is right in front of me. So if I were to look at the hallway all the way back there, I would start to like lower my head downwards and this would be my floor. So keeping that in mind, okay? And again, we're just doing this for memory. Those of you who are following along, you'll know this and you'll put this into practice once you start to observe your own reference. But now I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna make a back wall. And I'm gonna mark my back wall right about from where it says 14 to 17, okay? Take my uh, ruler and I'm gonna connect these two together. So this orthogonal line to the bottom here do the same thing here, sort of flip. And I like to always work sort of upside down as well. So I can kind of maneuver myself on this side to this side, okay? Do the same thing here. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. You can also calculate that and you can take your ruler and say, does that line converge onto that same point? Yes, it does. And now I have a back wall, a rough back wall, okay? What I also can do to make it less confusing for me as the artist, I can erase what's in that wall because technically I don't need it anymore. Technically, I could leave it for the sake of the demo, but I'm actually going to draw uh, or actually erase some of that back wall because that actually makes it much more easier to see my pictorial space, meaning my picture plane, much more clearly. But I will also remember the fact that that's where my vanishing point is. I need to remember this, okay? You could leave it, you could erase it. But remember towards the end of the drawing, we should have that erased because it will be a lot easier to see that back wall, okay? Now, what do we have? Now it gets exciting. We have one wall, we have a ceiling, we have another wall, we have a floor. You're done. Right now, we have the sort of basic structure of an interior space. But then now let's add a little bit of architectural spaces, doors, columns, ceilings, and tiled floors. How do we do this? Notice this is that vertical line that we made earlier. I'm gonna use that as a guide to kind of mark, go back to my vanishing point. I'm gonna hold my pencil on a 90, 90 degree angle, move my ruler, Notice it's on that actual vanishing point, right? It's not moving, but I get to move my ruler this way from right to left. Do you see that? I'm gonna move it right about here. And I'm just gonna, for the sake of the demo, sort of guess between this line and this line here on the bottom. I'm gonna make the middle, which is right about there, converge. And I'm gonna add another orthogonal line right about there, okay? This is my floor. Now I need to make the rest of it. What do I do? Take my pencil. Notice my ruler is right over here. I'm gonna move it. And my, again, my pencil is not moving on my vanishing point. And I'm just gonna roughly add in another line. Go back here, add in another line, and then do the same thing for my last orthogonal line. And again, these are just rough estimates. So I'm just gonna say, oh, it's right about there. Take my eraser clean my space, my back wall, get so it can be much more legible. And then now I have my what? I have my floor. Okay. Now let's make a door on this side, on this side of the wall. Okay. Now intuitively, think about this. The door should be halfway to my horizon. 
because this is where sort of if we added figures in this space, their heads would be around this horizon line, right? Similarly to when we looked at the Last Supper, right? But then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to say my door is closest to the back wall, right? This is closest to us, the side, this side of the wall to the right, but the more it converges, it gets denser and smaller. So I'm gonna make a back door here. Take my ruler. I'm gonna make a vertical line that actually, I'm actually gonna do it this way because it might be slightly easier. What about, actually no. So I'm gonna actually flip my ruler because I wanna compare this line. And I'm gonna make a vertical line that runs through the whole thing. Straighten my ruler. Okay. Um, now I'm going to actually slightly zoom in so we can get a more detailed shot image of that sort of perspective. Okay. What I'm now going to do is determine how wide is this door. So what do I do? I have one side of the door. I need to make another. Take my ruler. Make another vertical line. Now I have an estimate of the door, but we're, now this becomes problematic. Intuitively, if we were to look at this spatially in reality, does the door ever reach the ceiling? Think about it. What do you guys think? Does the door ever reach the top of a ceiling wall? No. Why is that? Because then it would be what? It would sort of connect the whole wall, right? So what, what do I do? I can take my ruler, again, line it up on my vanishing point, and I'm gonna say the door's height would be right about there. What do I do? Take my eraser, sort of clean up some of those edges remove some of those lines because I don't need them anymore. And now, ta-da, I have a door. It's a rough door, right? A general door, I should say. Did that make sense? I'm sorry, I apologize. The, the lighting is slightly off. Did that make sense, everybody? Yes. Yeah. Is this... Yes. Was this confusing? Be honest. That we need to sort of uh, understand the problems of the uh, the basic fundamentals of the perspective before we can kind of tackle more advanced things. Okay. What I'm now going to do, and this is where it gets interesting. I I want to now change. I'm going to make some changes architecturally. The hall, this back wall, I want to make it look like there's a hallway behind there. How can I do that? This is where it gets interesting. I'm actually going to make this wall slightly smaller by doing this. Taking my line, uh, my ruler, and making another line right about here. Okay. And then also, I'm going to darken. my back wall and it's not the best sort of value but you get the idea okay. i'm also going to bring this end of the right hallway or this wall closer to my door take my ruler and make another line right about there and I'm actually going to erase this line. Okay. Now it gets interesting because I'm also going to add the floor or the back wall's floor, I should say. I'm going to make a straight line here. And the same thing for the top, I'm gonna to make a straight line right about here. What did I do? I just made an imaginary hallway. 
because now we know intuitively the end of this wall is closest to us. Let me zoom in slightly so you can see it better, All right? This wall is closest to us. That back wall is receding to the right more because this corner right about here indicates that that's where the wall ends. And the same thing here, this corner right about here, slightly off because I sort of made uh, not a straight line, uh, it indicates where that back wall ends as well towards the top. Now, when I fill in my tiles, I also can see I can walk through that space if I was physically there, right, intuitively, All right? Did that make sense? Okay. I'm assuming based on you guys' silence that you guys are understanding, hopefully. If you have questions, please feel free to ask me. Now, let's jump to this wall. Let's make a column. Let's actually make two columns for the hell of it, right? Why not? I'm now going to, let me zoom out slightly. Give me one second, adjust the camera. Okay. I'm now going to make another, I'm going to make one, um, hmm. let's actually make another door, one column next to that door, and a bigger column towards the left. But then now, this is where it gets interesting. The bottom of this door, I'm going to take my ruler, and I'm going to mark it and make another horizon line right here, horizontal line, I should say, excuse me. And I'm going to make another one here, lining it up that indicates a set of tiles there, okay? Because it's sort of parallel to that. But I wanna make another door on this wall, on the left wall, I'm gonna sharpen my pencil real fast, to make believe for my viewers that there is another wall that is, that is farther, further away than this door, okay? I can also darken this door. So it's slightly much more legible to see. Notice I'm using the side of my pencil just to quickly, just to kind of map that in there, okay? I'm gonna take my ruler, okay? And to almost really close to this back corner, make a line that runs vertically this way. And I'm gonna say that door is smaller, so it's gonna be a lot more thinner, recede into that distance. Let me actually zoom in so you guys can see that. Okay, and now I'm gonna take my ruler. Remember every line, orthogonal line converges onto the what point? My vanishing point, right there. So that will be darkened. Take my eraser. Sort of erase those excess lines because I don't need them anymore. What I can do now Let's darken this. And those of you who are following along, you get the hang of this more and more because we're gonna utilize this practice more and more for this, profit, for this process. But then now intuitively, pay attention closely. Which, which door is closer to us as the viewer if we're standing again on that sort of vertical line here? This one. This one's further away because of those lines that we added on the bottom of the door. That sort of indicates as a guide, things become denser and smaller and they recede into space, okay? But then parallel to this door, which will be here, I'm gonna make a column, okay? I'm gonna take my ruler, can you see it on that end? Yes. And I'm gonna make a vertical line here. And I, I'm gonna be playing with the geometry a little bit. I want this column to come out of the wall, meaning it's a so sort of support beam on that wall. And I'm gonna make it a straight uh, three-sided column. What I'm gonna do is that line I made earlier, I'm gonna say, hmm, I want the column to come out right about there. Okay, and I just made a little mark there. I can calculate that as well. Say what, so a half an inch-ish, a little bit more. I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna mark it right on here on my vanishing point to this edge that I just made. Okay. 
I'm now going to do the same thing. And notice if I did the same thing on that side, meaning if I made another vertical line here, I want to see the difference. I can just flip my ruler so I can see this opposite side. And now I can make another line. Do you see that? And then now I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom here towards the top. Make another vertical line. And right about there, where that both of those corners meet, I'm gonna erase it so it can be a little bit cleaner so you guys can see. I'm gonna use that corner to what? To converge on my vanishing point. So I have another set of lines. Ta da. Okay. But then let's see, now I have the front of that column. What's in front of me? Again, if I'm standing here intuitively, in reality, I would see the side of that. But I would also see the side of that column. So then I'm, I can now calculate, or I can actually use just my ruler and say, you know what? That's the front. This is the width, how wide it is. I'm gonna say it's right about there. And you can see on the bottom, the more and more you can start to pay attention to it, it juts outwards, meaning it's on the floor and on the ceiling. Did that make sense? I can do it again as well. I'm gonna erase some of these lines of what we made earlier, of those orthogonal lines, because why do we don't need those? Because it's obviously, it's not gonna be a transparent column. It must be a solid structure. Did that make sense? Questions? I do a horrible job erasing, I do apologize. I now know intuitively that that back wall recedes on this orthogonal line is over, or excuse me, it's, it's behind this column. Because now what's in the bottom here on this column here, this converging line, this orthogonal line here that converges onto my vanishing point, it juts out. Off, off the wall itself, right? Oops, sorry, my camera moved slightly. But what's really interesting now, if I sort of fill in this space on one side, it's a lot more easier to see. And this is where when we add a lot of dark values, we'll indicate how wide and how tall the column is jutting out. Did that make sense? Oh, I don't need this line, excuse me. I'm gonna erase this. I'm gonna make that line actually come out more so I'm gonna stick my ruler. I'm gonna do a lot of cleaning in this process and I think that's the part uh, of the process slowly developing. There you go. You can see it much more clearly. I could technically erase that which I should, but my sort of eraser is sort of too wide, too wide on that surface. But yeah, there you go. Now it's a lot more cleaner to see. Did this process make sense so far? Yes. Perfect. Is anybody confused in this process? And it's okay if you are. We need to sort of catch our problems first sort of make our mistakes to become professional failures, to learn what we can do uh, when we make these mistakes together. It's a part of this process. And again, we're gonna make multiple attempts on our drawings to learn from our mistakes. Okay. Now let's make another uh, column. Actually, I'll make another column here, but I'm gonna make another door that sort of kind of goes more to the left that enters to a room, for example. Okay, what, I'm what am I gonna do? What I can do is sort of make another, actually, I'm gonna actually do this freehand, see how, what happens. I'm gonna make another vertical line. What about here? 
Okay. And that's going to be the entrance of the door, the beginning of the door. What I can do is now take my ruler, make it straight, make another horizontal line here. And notice I'm going through the whole thing, the whole thing, meaning that entire bottom half. So I can sort of indicate where those floorboards would be. And then I can calculate to see how wide each tile would be later on. Okay. And then now I'm going to do the same thing here on the top. And you guys, if you have questions, feel free just to chime in and just please state your name so I can know who's speaking. Okay. I'm now gonna also, uh, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna make this into another hallway without, uh, and then add another door in front of us. So we have our back wall and then we'll have another wall on this side, which are what in front of us? I'm gonna add, let's see a door, I'm gonna say hmm, roughly that big, that tall I should say. And then that's another one right over there. And again, remembering the fact that it doesn't go to my ceiling, I'm going to say the door would be what? Is that six and a half, like six and two, nine and a half. What about that? And now I can take my eraser. How are we doing on time? Ooh. Wrap it up so I can go to one or two. Okay. And I'm going to just now, let's see, what else can I add? I'm going to now add more tiles to this floor. Oh, actually, you guys can't see that. Let me zoom out so you guys can see that. There you go. What I'm going to do is now take my, I'm going to add another set of tiles here, take my vanishing point ruler. Okay, I'm gonna add just another set. Now I have a continuous floor, okay. I can also add another set of tiles. I can just, I'm doing this freehand just so we can get an idea of where those tiles are in relationship to space. I'd just like to see what's almost underneath. So I just make my ruler slightly straighter. I have my tile floors. Okay, clean some of these edges. Okay, but then now, and you notice here, they're a lot bigger. Obviously, they're slightly off. They're not uh, geometrically in terms of their proportion. Like this is way too big in relationship to this one. This one's slightly similar to that, but I can also add another orthogonal line. Uh, but just for the sake of the demo, uh, sort of running out of time. All right, now I have a sort of rough idea of where this back wall is to the left and then to the right, a hallway that starts to kind of converge onto the right and another hallway to the, le uh, to the left of here. What I can do, I can also sort of create sort of a generic, and again, this is very, very rough, obviously, right? This is sort of an idea of a two-sided door on both sides. And now I can start to, right. It's the halfway point. I'm gonna make like a, almost looks like another window, which is interesting. You can add a little door hole or a little door knob. And then you can do that freehand. I'll leave it up to you. But then here, I'm also going to add the bottom half. Usually, those are the sort of the frames of the bottom half of the steel doors. So I'll fill that in with some value. Okay. So then now, which just makes it much more legible. What happens now if I add it a, another column on this side? It's actually added on this side. I noticed these lines that we made earlier. I'm gonna actually make based off of this sort of drawing that we have here on this, or excuse me, this sort of horizon, horizontal line. I'm gonna say that column, actually make it a little bit closer to us because that will be the biggest. 
would actually come out to here. Okay. What do I do? Take my ruler. You can actually do it the opposite way. So you can sort of make this sort of lines parallel within each other. Uh, you're starting to get off the camera a little bit again. Say that again. Oh, oh, thank you, Mulch. I appreciate that. Hold on, let me move it on that side. Is that better? Uh, yes, thank you. Perfect, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Sorry about that earlier. Take my ruler, make a quick line. Okay. And then I'm going to also converge this line here to where? To my vanishing point. And notice it's slightly closer in terms of its perspective. So it's much more tighter. Here we saw more of the width of this surface because it's much more on that angle. But then now I'm going to take my ruler and then go to, can you see on that corner? Can you see on your side? Yes. On this corner here, make another vertical line. And again, if that ever does happen again, just guys, just let me know. Because again, if I do kind of go a little bit too fast, let me know, please. And then do the same thing. Let's say, I'm going to make this column, see, that wide. Okay. Take my ruler. Mark it right over there. Go to this point here on the top of my ceiling. So my ruler is slightly off. The, okay. Okay. And now I have both sides of that column. So then I can start erasing. So we can see what's in front. Clean this up so you can see it better. And now I can take this corner right about here. I'm going to make, because this is what's in front. Same thing similarly to how we made this almost a long rectangle. I'm going to make a ruler converge onto that angle. Start erasing some of those marks. And I'm going to, I'll start to refine those lines a little bit clearer so you can see it better. And notice the scale is a lot larger. Why? It's because it's a lot closer to the viewer, which is where we are. Let's just go over this in the same lines. So let me just drop this a little bit clearly. Okay. Now I have a bigger column. Is that easier to see? Does that make sense? Can you see that on your, yeah, you can see it on your side. So then now, intuitively, the thing closest to us is what? The biggest. Things that recede into distance is what? The smallest. Did this make sense so far? Yes. Perfect. I can now start to erase some of these areas so it can be much more clearer to see. But then you can also, I always like to work upside down when I get into my ceilings. Let's roll it so I can just make this a little bit more legible. I'm applying a little bit more pressure so you can see where this sort of wall is because that's a flat wall. And again, I'm going to darken, oh, sorry, so now. I'm going to darken some of this to sort of separate each wall so you can sort of see the differences. And you guys get the idea. Okay, now you can see these walls that are sort of grayed out are in front of us. Meaning if we're standing right here on this line that we made earlier in the beginning, we can see and we sort of pivot our heads 
from right to left, we can start to see that what's in front of us, which are these gray sides that we sort of indicated, is flat, meaning uh, flat on our side, on our perspective. But what sort of converges onto that vanishing point is lighter. And just for the sake of the demo, it will darken whatever is flat, so you can see the differences between the two. And you can go back into your eraser, clean some of those areas up. And you can start to see intuitively, again, I want you to trust your eyes in this process, is that that column that's jutting out of this wall, meaning on this surface of the wall, it's coming to the left, is a lot thicker, meaning that it comes off that picture plane. And the, you can also see the side of that column that converges onto that vanishing point from the top to the bottom here. That door is smaller, we, and we know it's behind the column, right? And then so on and so forth. You could use this process to really understand those variables between what's closest to us, which is this column. The next object would be the door, and then this uh, column, and then this door, and then moving back and forth. And now we have what? Three-dimensional space, right? You could also go back and start to add more value and even darken in some of those tiles. Oh, you know what? I need to erase this so we can see that's the floor that goes to the hallway, which is crucial. Those differences between, you know, every other tile. And again, this is rough, so you guys can do the general idea. What questions do we have? So it's getting slightly lighter. I'm going to sharpen this. You guys get the idea so far. And this is just working from memory. Obviously, if I had a reference, which we're going to use for the next demo, we're going to be using much more clear geometry. But just for the sake of the demo, we're going to be using this as the reference. Did that make sense? Yeah. So far? Okay. What questions do we have about this demo? Let me zoom out a little bit so we can see all of it. What about your ceiling? And I think this is where it gets interesting. What do we add on our ceilings usually? Lighting, um, whatever it's track lighting, recess lighting. You could also add barrel vaults or, or um, arches if you want, depending on certain spaces. You could add uh, just more uh, horizontal lines to sort of converge onto that space. That's different. Maybe I can add some rough estimates, meaning I can just add a line here. I'm just doing this freehand, just kind of indicate that. Oh, there's my there's my sort of ceiling right here, right. And also I can add another set of orthogonal lines. This is just rough. It's almost like an upside down uh, floorboard or a set of tiles, all, all converging onto that same vanishing point, remember. Now I have a ceiling. I can darken the whole thing. Let's do that now. Let's take my eyes sharper now. work upside down. I'm going to move my station. I'm slowly working upside down. It's kind of
Okay. Now I have my ceiling and I'm done. That's all you need in this process. As long as we identify where your vanishing point is, where your horizon line is, and how all of your lines converge onto your single vanishing point is the actual assignment. Okay. Questions? No questions, okay. I'm gonna stop the recording.